Hello and welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me again. I'm out and about and today I'm with Simon, otherwise known as, on his YouTube channel, The Woodlander. Hello Simon. Nice to see you again Richard. Nice Hello everyone. Now you may remember I did an interview with Simon over Zoom in the studio, but Simon very kindly invited me to his wonderful woodland retreat. And it is a retreat. We've got this amazing cabin we're not going to go in because that's a bit of private space but if you look down here you'll see just how vast it really is how big is your cabin about 2000 square foot 2000 square foot and here we are we're in wilch is it wiltshire it is yeah. in wiltshire yeah we're in wiltshire and we're surrounded by trees up a track no one would know and in fact the vast majority of people don't know you're here no and that's uh, that's fine that's <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's fine. And you've got, I mean, we've picked a lovely day. The sun is actually shining and it's coming through in different things. You've got all sorts of trees around here. Lots of, I've seen beech and birch, um, sycamore. Oak. Oak. Uh, red cedar, larch. Rhub rhubarb, that's we've not got a tree. Rhubarb, <laughs> yeah. Um, and all sorts of stuff. Now you're, now, you're going to take me around a little bit and show me what you do here. I'll show you up the front to where we keep the livestock. Now the lovely Julia as ever is acting as uh, camera lady. There she is. Thank you very much. Um, this is um, old, what's his name? This it? is rhododendron. Rhododendron, that's it. Which most people dislike in a woodland. It is an invasive species, but... Does that mean there's an estate that was here at one time? Not too far away is a, a large stately home and a right. safari park. Ah, right. And this would have been bought over probably in the 17th century um, for their gardens. And as you say, and places. it just goes everywhere. But beautiful when it's in in bloom, flower, it's in absolutely bloom. fantastic. And that'll be out later this month. Right. Um, and it does afford really good cover as well. And the birds we keep, the chickens and the turkeys, yes. originally would have been um, jungle birds. Oh, right, would they? So their natural habitat is actually this, is actually woodland. Yeah. And it's, it, it's interesting because when you see other birds and farmed birds, they're not in anything like their natural habitat. It's no, not all at all. barren and bleak. Yeah. And, and so I guess they, they must be very happy here. Well, I mean, most people will, 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 would have seen chickens scratching around and um, what they really want is something like the leaf litter. Right. And the roots of trees. And you've got plenty of that here. Plenty of that. Uh, and that's where all the grubs will be. Yep. Um, and then they would have roosted in the branches to keep away from the predators. Um, and it offers them shade. Yes. And shelter from the rain. Yes. So this is the, the best environment for, for chickens, to be honest, um, and which is why we chose them. And how many have you got? We'll have a look at them in a minute. We've got about 120. Um, most of them are rare breeds, which means that we can actually separate them off and sell the eggs for breeding. And we've also got a group of laying hens as well, which we sell those eggs or we use those eggs to barter for fruit and vegetables, as right. we were discussing yes. earlier. Well, bartering, it's, I mean, you know, that's such a, an old fashioned thing. Isn't it great to be able to do that? Yeah. Um, Instead of having to have the exact pence, you know, when you go into a supermarket and it, in the old days, you used to sort of, you know, I remember going in the say, oh, it's 49 or it's 51p and you say, oh, I've only got 50p. Oh, don't worry about it. And that would be fine. Yeah. yeah. But now, so it's so nice to go back to that more relaxed way of And dealing. I'm finding more and more people are, are, are willing to actually trade in that way. Yeah. Um, and when we spoke on your channel before, we were talking about how we could do things as a group and people coming together. And I think what you'll find is someone will be really good at growing vegetables and someone's really good with fruit trees and someone's yes. good with pigs and someone's good with chickens. And as a group, you yes, suddenly got you all of your needs covered. Yeah. And it's really just being able to bring all of those skills together and then working out how we can transfer these skills to, to each person. And you have that, that amazing, you're not on your own, you have a community exactly that. that you're learning from. So yeah. if somebody's good at growing veg and, you, can, and you, you want to do a bit, you can ask them. 
and, and you trade can go skills along. and trade uh, product. And the, the idea is that as we buy land in each county, it will be allocated for certain things, some for camping, some for growing fruit and vegetables, some for livestock, some for poultry. And you, could, you can move around and you might say, well, we'll do a camping trip down in Wiltshire or we'll do, a, we'll go and have a look at the allotments and the fruit trees up down in Worthing. Yeah. And, um, and you can learn at each of these different places. There's nothing like that around. And there's also people that want to move back onto the land, like I, I think did. people are desperate, aren't they? That life has become very sterile yeah. with the, the digital um, everything now. You know that. I mean, when you show kids the analog way, typewriters, record players that had belts and things, they're fascinated by yeah, that yeah, yeah. old-fashioned way. And and you come in here with real livestock. Let's have a look at some of the, the things in the polytunnel here. And, and you can see that people will connect. I think it's just in the DNA of people that they just desperately want to be part of, of nature. Look at this. This is amazing. Well, that's a silky and a sea bright. So are these rare, rare breeds? These are, rare, these are classed as rare breeds. Um, look at that. Look, look, what's this one here? That's a sea bright, a gold sea bright. A sea bright. Look at that. That's just wonderful to see them in there. You've got them inside. I have these... got them inside a polytunnel. Um, sadly, the, it's the rules and regulations. The rules like and everything. regulations that came in to do with bird flu. Um, and I've had discussions with DEFRA um, about how ludicrous they were. And to be honest, it's nothing to do with the birds. It's to do with making it more difficult for the general population to be able to keep livestock oh, and the right. more difficult they can make it for you the less likelihood you're there is do, you, yeah. you're going to so and there more... you you become more dependent on um, the system you have to go and get your eggs from the shop you have to get your chicken from the shop um, and that's really what why all these things were put in place yeah um, and that's it's just for big companies yeah corporations yes. to to make a lot of money from should we wander up and have a look at more of these. It's beautiful to see the trees, all with the tree moss, the little sort of, as Julia calls it, they've got their socks on. Yeah. <coughs> well, the larger ones in here are Brahmas. Brahmas. Hello. Hello, Mr. Brahma. Mrs. Oh, I beg your pardon, Miss, Mrs. Brahma. And the Brahmas can grow to about three foot. Can they? Which is quite a size for a chicken. Three foot, wow. That is incredible. So how much land have you, excuse me, how much land have you got, Simon? Well, I've got two acres. So it's about an acre from the front door to the, to the gate. And you've been here for over? Uh, since 2014. We oh, bought right. the land yeah. in 2014. Because I know you were saying that um, on the show, there's an old law there Just is. to remind people how you managed to achieve this. Well, I used the four-year rule, which, which actually states that um, <laughs> if you build and live in a house or a home on your own land and you live in it for four years, it then becomes immune from enforcement. So they can't stop you doing it from that point onwards. And there are caveats that have, through the years, been added to that four-year rule. You can't deliberately hide what you've done. Right and you can't apply for planning for say a barn and then really it's a house. Right. And then say, I've been here for four years. So there are caveats that have been added, um, but it's quite an English rule, which is if you do something and no one's complained about it, yeah. after four years, you can continue. But sadly, even that they're trying to yes. wheedle out of and they want to, to, to make it 10 years. Oh, do they? Um, and if somebody has a problem, they can come and say, we've had a complaint, for 10 years. take it down. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it, what you've done and looking at your barn and going on the inside and seeing all the stuff that you've done to that barn, you have to be incredibly committed and not only committed to it, but able to live the lifestyle because you're isolated here. You can't just nip down to a supermarket as and when. The one thing you said as soon as we arrived, 
was the fact if you're living off grid, especially in a wood like this. It's mud. Mud. <laughs> mud. Glorious yeah. mud. People, people who, uh, who actually do live on the land will, will understand that completely. Yeah. Um, and it does become, it becomes part of your life. Um, you deal with you deal with the seasons properly. Um, yes. So in winter you've got to deal with the cold and uh, you know things freezing, and in the summertime you've got to get shade. And if you're dealing with animals, you've got to have more water. Uh, so there's all these different aspects, but they're all enjoyable and they're all understandable. Yes. But well, I suppose my point. Let's just stroll up here a little bit more. My point really was that, as I say, even though they've made the laws difficult, not everyone in this day and age is going to run to this lifestyle. You've got to no. be of a particular person to cope with it. So it seems a shame that they want to just not let people do it who are that way inclined. Well, I've worked with, I've worked with 20 families now to do the same thing. I've got an inbox much the same as yours, which is full of people asking questions. How can yes. you do it? How? And there are other ways of doing it. You don't have to use the four year rule. Um, there's several different routes. And that's what we're exploring at the moment, which is different ways in which we can get people back onto the land. Which, well, that's what uh, certainly Julia and I um, are very keen to, to get away from town life now. We've done a lot of that, haven't we, Julia? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's nodding. Um, and I think we both have that feeling and of course the way that the way that society has built up it has been people have come over off the land 100 200 years ago we're all in this very easy sort of lifestyle very convenient in your houses but there's something missing for some people perhaps not my children they're very interested in being in town life computers and pubs and all of that Whereas, I don't know, for Julia and I, we're a bit more mature and this speaks to us, as it clearly speaks to you. Without a doubt. And I said to you earlier, when, um, before we were filming, just, just being up here for half an hour, yeah. it, it just allows you to slow down, yeah. allows you to take stock, allows you just to be, just, to, you don't have to do anything. You can actually just be. And, and there's very few spaces that allow you to do that. No. Um, without intrusion of telephones and screens and traffic and jobs and everything else. So to be able to be in a space like this where I can just take my time and uh, I can just look after the animals and grow some vegetables and, you know, play with the dogs. Yes, you have seven <laughs> dogs, don't you, who run around. I guess that's quite handy. And, and the cats, you have... You have a room for the yep. cat. Let's go here because you've got some bluebells and things. And it's a lovely time to uh, be in woodland. And of course, we've picked a, a nice day. What's it like in the winter, though, when it's pouring with rain, it's freezing cold, and you've got to attend to things, and you'd rather be inside tucked up? Well, the, the, the beauty of living here is I've got the cabin, so we can... Uh, we're warm enough inside. I've got an abundant, abundant um, amount of wood for the wood burner. Yes, absolutely. Um, your Essie would never run out. No, here. no. I, I would get her towed to the back of my van. Yeah. Bring and it up. The strange thing is you come to appreciate the seasons as well. Yes. And every single one is different and you notice them. You can see when spring hits. Yes. And, and the, the bluebells come up and the buds on the trees and the leaves start coming out and autumn again is for me is a time for preparation um you've got to get things ready for the winter and winter is that time where you sort of batten the hatches down and, and um you enjoy the the fruits of your labor which you've done through the spring and autumn um you can just hear, hear the birds it's great to hear them um one of the things um that's interesting is you have a certain look about yourself you look quite weathered if i may say i this. am weathered and, <laughs> and i don't really, but it's like you just fit this yeah because yeah. I, but the thing is so anyone looking at you would think blimey simon's clearly done this for years and years and years no. but that's not the case is it no not at all um i was an artist i still am um i'd never built anything 
I never kept animals. Um, this was all new to me. So quite a challenge then. Yeah, but I, I mean, I don't mind a challenge. No, no, I don't I'm not, no, no, no I wasn't saying it was. Um, but it was it was a steep learning curve. Yeah, I mean, building the cabin was a, a, a wild experience, um, but I really enjoyed the, that part of it. And keeping the livestock is. Um, you have to get a routine, you have to get up in the morning, you've got to feed the birds, you've got to collect the eggs, you've got to clean them and put down fresh hay uh, for the ducks and the turkeys. Um, but it's all enjoyable. And it, I, I think this whole lifestyle, to me, actually, I find it very understandable. Right. That if I do this, this happens. Whereas I think in modernity, Every, we, everything's taken away from us. Everything just happens without yes. us actually doing yes. anything. Yes, we're not connected to it anymore. We're not connected to anything. We're not connected to our food. We're not connected to the seasons. We're not connected to the land. And I honestly believe most people feel rootless, mm. atomized, yeah, and, and really a little bit of their soul has gone. And, and I think that happened when people were removed from the land and then not allowed access either. No. There's so many people in towns and cities that they might get to a park, but they'd never get to a place like this and never see, the, no. you know, the light shining through the trees in a and, woodland. And we're walking, I mean, we're walking on undulating land, which is yeah. very natural. And when you think, um, I'm just going to walk down here so we see some of these wonderful birds. When you think that most of the time we're walking on paving slabs, tarmac, concrete, all levelled and made very easy, and, uh, you know, it's just nice to be connected um, to Mother Earth. Exactly that. Absolutely. And, I'll, I mean, I'll ask you an honest question mm. um, for you and the camera lady. The lovely How feeling. do you feel just being here? It's, I mean, it's, for us, it's like coming home. I mean, we tried to go out in the van last year, once we'd got the van a bit sorted out, our van, we did go off. Unfortunately, Julia's got two children and, and, and a sort of an estranged husband, I suppose you'd call it. So it's difficult with kids. But if we didn't have those, um, we'd probably be doing a bit more van life. But, in, but finding these sort of places to go to and then now realising this is actually the sort of thing we want to stop. We'd, uh, woodland is very dear, I know, to Julia and it's very dear to me. Um, and Julia's a tree hugger, a self-confessed tree hugger, um, and, and she's nodding the camera. So, yeah, this is, and the, do you know, peace and quiet is so important. Which sounds weird because you're surrounded by turkeys well, going off and chickens going off yeah. and birds singing in the trees. And but it's, it's, it's different to the, the drone of, noise, of cars. And where I live, there's a pub nearby, you hear people pulling out, you hear arguments, you hear people's televisions, you hear the, their phones. It's, 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 towns seem to be a hub of stress. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And, and here you've got the, you know, there's just natural beauty. I mean, man's pretty good at, at aesthetics on some buildings, which is nice. But not in recent times. He's sort no. of thrown that out, and you've got utilitarian buildings. They're horrible and ugly. But here, you've just got beauty wherever you look. You know, the, the, as the sun comes round, as different parts of the season comes in, it's just majestic. It is. And if you can be part... And the thing was, we were like this. I mean, you know... Exactly that. You're living how people used to be, and it clearly, it sings to me, because it's, it's so real and, and, and vital. You know, there's, you can sense I think, the power I think coming more, from the earth. I think more and more people recognise that, that that departure from the land and not being able to get back to it has done us no good. Mm. And that in so many different areas, if we were to be growing our own food, looking after the animals that we keep, yeah. um, and getting back to nature, it's Cause... actually a much healthier way of life. And you think to yourself, in, in these, the mad modernity that we're in, people are progressing all the time. And I think, well, what are you progressing to? What's the end goal? Because ultimately, isn't it about being happy? Isn't it about being one with your environment? 
and we seem to think that it's somewhere else other than, you know, here under our feet. Well, that progression, that progressive, is a very strange word because we always think that that's leading to something better. Yes. But it doesn't necessarily I think you're mean right. so. Um, I think somewhere along the line we took a wrong turn. Yeah. And well, all, I... all I've decided to do is turn to... around and go back to <laughs> where maybe we should have been. Yeah, because I think, it, to me, it's like we've done this experiment and experiments are good because we can learn from it and go, do you know what, let's not do that anymore. Yeah, that didn't work. Let's yeah. go back to what we know. So um, you're here with your wife. I'm here with my wife. We uh, weren't sure if the children were going to come or not, but one went off to university, one moved in with a boyfriend, and we ended up here with... Uh, Seven dogs, 120 chickens, and some cats running around. <laughs> um, and I guess being outdoors is very much part of it. You've got the beautiful cabin, which is uh, um, fully equipped. So let's just quickly talk a little bit about that, because people will be thinking, hang on, OK, so you're a cabin. You what, you've got a stove in one corner, an old wooden chair in the other, a bit yeah. like a shepherd's hut type That's thing. That's it. And, but it's not that. You've got gas, no, well, you've got electricity, you've got water. Yep, I've got all of those and they're all off grid. So the water is a rainwater collection system and I store about 2000 litres. And this is England, so I'm never sure. It's always <laughs> falling out of the sky on a regular basis. Right. Um, I collect that, that goes through a filter system and then it's pumped into the cabin via the taps. The gas is propane which I can use. Um, I've also got the log burner, which again, heats the cabin. Yeah. It's, it's a comfortable way of living, but I've also got a washing machine and a tumble dryer. Yes. Um, and, and those things come along with a wife, right? Because <laughs> they refuse to wash down by the creek these right. days. Yes. And, uh, you know, I've got a nice fridge, which I can keep my food cool in and a cooker to cook on and four bedrooms. Yes. So it's interesting how we, we live in a techno, technological age. So that technology is not invading what you do. It's, no. not, it's not like in houses now with things that are listening to you so that you can play music and, and go online and have things controlled remotely. No, no, no. The technology, you're using technology for your benefit, exactly. not for its benefit. And I've said this all the way through in my own channel, which is, People think because I live here in the middle of the woods in a cabin, which I do, and it's a timber building, and I'm very much nature-based, that, that I am anti-technology. Mm. And I'm not, because the use of technologies, the solar panels, the inverter, and the battery charger, and the batteries, are all technology. Yes. But it's that technology that allows me to live on the land and not be dependent on yes. the whole system. Yes. Um, I can actually choose to live the way I wish to choose. So, you, um, so instead of just going back, you know, like you said, you go back to a, a, a different way, but it's not that thing of having to walk miles to no, the creek no. to get the water and no. rubbing sticks together, you know. As, it's as some taking, people taking the imagine. best parts of of society and we've come up you know we're ingenious people we've yeah. invented some great stuff um but stuff that the the governments and those that would control us can't use against me they can't use the solar panels against me i mean no. the smartphone i use and then turn off <laughs> like, exactly. it's like... but it's all empowering you isn't it yes that's the thing and you're using it to aid your existence here in this absolutely incredible and fantastic wood Simon, it's been wonderful to visit and have a little walk round. Um, I know Julia and I are going to do another little video um, as on the, our other channel, The English Couple. Um, <laughs> you're running a project in which you're trying to make this type of thing available for other people who are very keen to do that, which is incredibly laudable because you could just do this and hide away and, and not share the wisdom. Someone asked me the other day and they said, um, why are you doing it? Why are you doing that? Because you don't have to. No. And they're absolutely right. The truth is, I'm, I'm set. I, I, I can opt out as much 
or as little as I want from that system and I don't need to do anything else. But there's so many other people out there that just need a hand, yeah. that just need help and, and, and you know, not everyone can afford to buy a piece of land. So brilliant, let's get together and do it together. And yeah. I honestly believe like, it is going to be the way forward. Like, there's going to be people that really don't want anything to do with that transhuman future that seems to be coming. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> folks, I will just turn this off. Oh, it's Aaron, he's probably, I'd say our colleague who's coming along. We'll get back to him in a second. In a second. Um, yeah, and so if I can help, I will. Yeah. I, I'm going to. Um, and I think the great thing about that is the more people who do it, the less the, the government and, and authority exactly can, that. can squash you. Because if there's only a few people doing this, it's easy to sort of turn it into a, a sort of, oh, that's not what you want. You know, you want to stay over here in the, in the city. But the more people that are free and able to do this, then suddenly it becomes a movement that is, is unstoppable. Exactly that. And it, it is a numbers game. It's a numbers game. And I think we're going to end up, we will probably be the smaller group in society but we will be millions strong. And, and healthier. And well. healthier. Yeah. We're definitely the healthiest part of society, without a doubt. Well, Simon, I'd better end it there because somebody's desperately trying to ring, but this has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for bringing us up. No problem at all. showing the lovely audience. And um, you have a YouTube channel, The Woodlander. I do. And if you'd like to jump over and yeah. sub to that, that would be great. There you go. Um, and I'll leave the description in the link. It's the other way around. I leave the link in, in the, the description. description. <laughs> that's, what, that's what getting into back to nature does to you. So thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed it. A uh, big thanks to the lovely Julia for doing the camera work. And Simon, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, and Richard. And hopefully see you again soon. Till then, from us, from us goodbye. <laughs>